Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this incredible session of learning. I am with you Dharmendra Singh. You are watching PM Evidya channel and also NCERT official. Uh, subject is of course language English for class 9 student and here we will understand how to write a letter for complaint and which is basically the topic of our today's session, letter of complaint. Related to this, if you have any query, any questions, uh, you get back to us on our telephone number. You can see on your television screen, it's double eight double zero four four zero five five nine. Uh, one thing you need to make sure when you dial this number and ask your question, you need to put the volume down of your television. So actually we will get your question in a proper way and put in front of the uh, experts, so you will get the proper answer. Apart from this, you may also send your questions, your suggestions through mail as well. Official mail ID for class 9 student, that is dts.class9 at the rate cit.nic.in. To watch this program live, you may tune in PM Vidya channel online and of course live uh, streaming and broadcasting also continue on NCERT official YouTube. The only thing is that you need to subscribe this and you have already been done this as I am uh, assuming like this. In studio, we have uh, Ms. Meenu Gupta, she is a mentor teacher. I welcome you ma'am. Good afternoon. So, how we are going to understand letter of complaint? First, uh, if we can brief the mean of letter of complaint, what it is exactly all about. See, letter writing per se, you don't have in your syllabus for class CBSC, mm -hmm. class 9. However, you start writing letters right from classes, I think from your primary classes. You write your letter to the principal, then you write a letter to your brother, uh, your families. So, letter is just nothing. It is just a form of communication that we do in writing. And, and then we, uh, what I need to point out is what we are talking about today is not just important from the point of view of class 9th, but even for your, your board examinations and for future class 11 and 12th as well. Right, so a letter of complaint, so do we have some types, uh, some PowerPoint presentations so we can understand easily? Of course, yes. So as we, I was talking about letter. It, our, a form of written communication or uh, which is from one person to the another through a written medium and it is basically a particular uh, reason why we are writing that list, letter. So on the basis of the reason why we are writing the letter, it can be divided into a formal letter and an informal letter. So informal letter is a personal letter that you write to your family members, friends or even relatives yeah. and formal letter is a letter that is written for an official purpose. It can be a letter to an editor, it can be a letter of complaint to authorities, it could be a letter of complaint in case you have bought something faulty or it can be a letter for placing an order. Some of these would be in your syllabus for class 10th and some of these we would be talking today. Right. So before we begin, let us understand what is a formal letter. Up to class 8, you have done one type of formal letter that is letter to your principal of your school. So now today we will talk about if we are required to write a letter to somebody who you do not know, who is not in your immediate surrounding. Hmm. So formal letter is usually written to people who, do, who you do not know personally. You can write about registering complaints, replies, you can make inquiries, you can ask or provide information. You can create awareness about some social issues. Mm -hmm. We can place orders, cancel orders. We have business letters and even job applications that are written. And you eventually would be doing them in your further classes. So what's the style or language of writing a formal letter? First of all, as it is not personal, so you need not write any kind of a greeting. For example, when you are writing to a your parents or to your brother, what you will ask, how are you, I hope you are fine. But in case of a formal letter, all this is totally missing. There is no need to give any information personally. What we need to do is, we need to stick to the purpose because you do not know that person. Mm. So that why should that person read your letter? So it should be very short, crisp, to the point and you need to stick to the information that needs to be either asked or provided. Second, the language that is business like but clear and it usually stick to the facts. We do not assume things, we do not imagine things, we do not presume or predict ki this might happen, I think like this, no, nothing like that. We just stick to the facts and then we continue with the letter. 
So this is the format of the letter as you all must have seen. First the sender's address and because I am writing the letter, so I would be the sender and what will I will write here? My own address. Then we write the date. Then whom do we let address this letter to? That is the receiver. So we write the receiver's address. So for example, if I am writing to a uh, police officer, so I would write the police officer, the, uh, the police station and wherever that police station is placed. So that would be the address of the receiver. Then the subject, that is the topic of the letter, the format and then you say your thanks and then yours sincerely. Earlier you must have written yours faithfully but now in the later vocabulary we use only yours sincerely for the letter. So how do we start writing a letter? I think I have a question here I would like to yes, stop here actually that thing is going in my mind. Suppose I have to start write a letter. So yes. can we break in three parts how to start with and the middle part and the last part. So the most challenging is, challenging is that how we can start this. Suppose uh, we need to write a letter to, to a police commissioner while having some uh, unusual things going on in your society. Uh, mm -hmm. So words should be I think different and the you know the start would be different. And suppose you need to write a letter to, you, to your teacher, so the word should be different. So how we can start this? So how we can generate that sense? Yes, you are absolutely right. The introductory sentence of your letter needs to be very precise in the context of the subject of the letter. So as you have pointed out, if I am writing to my principal or to my teacher, I would be writing that I am a student of this class. That you would have been already writing in your cl previous classes like 7 and 8. However, if I am writing to the police commissioner, that person might not be knowing me personally. So what I need to point out is where actually do I stay? Because if it is the case for my society, then I would be pointing out that I am the residence. This mm. is to bring to your notice that I am the resident of this, this, this society mm. and this is my cause of concern. Right. So when we continue with the lesson today, I will point out how to use the information that is given in the question and how to frame a letter according to that. So let us continue with the, sure. so this is how we start organizing a letter. So what we do is we first plan the layout of the letter or the format we already know which we have just seen. Then we decide on the greeting like what Dharmendar had already asked that how do we I start the lesson. Then I brainstorm that is I think what I actually want to write in the letter. Hmm. What are the points of talk, what are the content that I am going to write. I plan my introduction that is the greeting which he had asked. Then I put in the main body and then I close and after I have written the letter I just go through it again to see whether whatever I have written is coherent and makes sense. So it is called proofreading. So, how do I think what to write? So this is called brainstorming. Now we are going to brainstorm and think how am I going to write the letter. First I will read the question very carefully. Mm. You are supposed to read the question at least twice because when we read it only once we might skip some information there. So then you need to decide the reason why I am writing the letter that is which kind of letter I am going to write. Mm. Am I going uh, to write a complaint? Am I going to write a letter to the editor? Or am I going to place an order with some company? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. So I need to decide the reason of my writing that letter. Then you need to point out which information you want to give or get. It can be a complaint, request, order, anything. And then what do you want as in context of the action of that letter? Right. Because there would be a purpose you are writing that letter. Hmm. So there should be an action involved. Ki what, why am I writing that letter? Hmm. So as Tarminder had already pointed out, if we see what information to put in, there is a beginning that is called introduction. Then there is a middle which says the main issue. It could be cause and effect. Suppose there is a traffic jam, there is a lot of vehicles on the road. Mm. So what would be the effect of those? It would lead to traffic jam right? or it could lead to accidents or it could lead to chaos and mismanagement. Mm. So this is called cause and effect. So what we do in the main body, we first introduce the problem, then we write the 
all the main points related to that problem. What are the problems? Then what are the effects of those problems? And then what I do is I even offer suggestions ki what could be done. Because sometimes we might have some option of what the problem is. So we point out our own suggestions also. We do not do, do like these are the problems 1, 2, 3, 4 and then do something about it. Right. No, this is not the way to write the letter. You point out the problem and then you give some possible suggestions how that problem can be solved. That is why we always say there are three paragraphs in the letter. First, the introduction where you state the problem. Second, the main body that where you actually pinpoint all the problems that are faced by the people or you or whatever the person in concern is. And then we po uh, point out the plausible solutions. And then we put in the closing statement. So, the beginning could be like Dharmendra had already asked. You can see on your screens, you can even go back after the program has already been completed. You can go back to the YouTube channel and have a look at these stem sentences and note down in your own notebook so that you can refer them again and again. So, it could be I am a resident of this area. It may, pains me to bring to your kind attention the growing issue. If it is a problem, then it, you can say it pains me and in case it is a very good thing, you want to celebrate it, then you can point it out. It brings me joy to bring to your kind attention. And in case you do not know whom you want to address, like there are some problems we do not know whom to write. In those cases, we write that letter to the editor so that it goes in the newspaper and there it is published and the concerned authorities may have a look at it. In case there is a main body, that is the par paragraph number 2 of your uh, letter writing. There you can use sentences like, I think the authorities are not paying attention or they are lending deaf ears, uh, enlightened approach or it, if you want a quick action, so immediate approach, immediate requirements demand. So these are some sentences that can be used while writing the letter. And these are for your paragraph number 3, that is your conclusion where you are demanding action. Like kindly grant my humble writing or I hope my point will be taken. I look forward for a prompt reply if you are asking for some information. So these are some possible sentences that you can use again and again in any kind of letters that you are writing. So in front of the screen, you can see a sample question. Now what we will do is we will try to arrange the information given in the letter and how to actually write the letter from the question. Hmm. So Dharminder will help us read the question please. Right. Uh, I will take your name actually. Uh, <laughs> okay. I will quote my name. All right. You are Dharminder from St. Paul School. Okay. My name and the name of your school is written down there. Delhi, of course, there is a place name. Write a letter to the police commissioner of your city drawing his and her attention to the means of hawkers, okay, outside your school. Uh, usually, we have seen those kind of uh, uh, pictures in society. Tell him her what dangers they pose and offer solutions for their rehabilitation. Exactly. Absolutely. So, the question is that you have to write a letter to the police commissioner drawing his attention to the menace of the hawkers. Who are hawkers? People who actually put their shops on the roadsides. Mm. So there are a lot of hawkers around you. You must have seen them. You can actually know what the, the problems they cause. Now what are we going to do is we are going to arrange it in form of a letter. So this, this is the format of the letter they had we already talked about. Now let us arrange our information. So, what is the sender's address? If I can go back to the slide, you are Dharmendra from St. Paul School, mm -hmm. Delhi. So, what is your address? Um, St. Paul School, Delhi. Delhi, exactly. So, sender's address would include St. Paul School, mm -hmm. Delhi. Write a letter to police commissioner of your city. So, who would be the receiver? The police commissioner of, of and city, city is right. Delhi, of course. And right. So, this is how we actually put down the information as. So, this sender's address, then you put in the date that is today, 4th February 2022, 
and then the receiver's address is the Polish Commissioner, Delhi. Then salutation is dear sir or dear madam if it is a female. Then subject of the letter. So, what is the subject? Right. I, I want you to uh, continue with this, this uh, slide. Uh, you can see sender name, date, receiver address, uh, solution and subject. So, this format how that actually helps student to form a letter in a proper way. Suppose if we do not have format, but we need to write a write a letter to any of any of the person or any of the officer. So, how this format is going to help you out to put the things in, in, in a proper manner. So, actually see, you will be in the position to write it in um, a quick manner. So, uh, see what actually happens is that uh, the information needs to be very precise. Hmm and concise in terms of what we need to send to the person who does not know me actually and he might be short on time. Hmm. So, what we do is actually it is a accepted format that anybody who is going to look at the letter hmm. knows where to find the particular information that hmm. if he is reading the first paragraph he would be knowing what exactly is the problem. If he is looking at the second paragraph then he is looking at the details and if it is he is looking at the third paragraph he is actually looking what kind of action is needed or what kind of help is needed. So, that is why we are actually uh, time and again telling you to put your letters in three paragraphs not just one paragraph. Right. Usually what students do the mistake and actually they lose marks also on this that they write one paragraph in the letter mm -hmm. that is not to be done. Right. You need to divide your uh, letter into problem, description and then closing. So, can we say this is you know uh, another way to put your things in, in a professional manner? Yes. Actually, what exactly you would like to convey to you <laughs> to the particular organization. All right, let us move ahead and we have 6 minutes left now. So, we can understand few more things. Yes. So, this is the subject and then we uh, write uh, the content and how do we actually write the content? You may look at this mind map. So, if I am writing a complaint, I would write an introduction, then I would write the problems faced then I would write the action that is needed and the suggestions. Hmm. So, what could be my introduction that I am a student of this school. It pains me to bring to your kind attention the growing issue of what? Hawkers. Hmm. And what are the problem faced? If there are hawkers around me, what would my problem be? What are they selling? Unhygienic food? Hmm. There would be no space to walk, there would be crowd, crowd all around me, it would lead to traffic jams and right. problems. So, what could be the suggestion? Either we move the hawkers that is called relocation, that mm -hmm. is we change the location of the hawkers that is called relocation and or what can be done is we can ask them to open their shops after, school after the school okay. hours, so that school is not affected. And what authority needs to do is work on our suggestions, simple. Very nice. So, what the letter would look like is, is this that there would be the sender's address, date, receiver's address, then the subject, menace of the hawkers, then this is a sample I have written. It is not necessary you use the same words, hmm. but the idea should remain the same that paragraph 1 says problem, 2 says the details and third says that kindly act upon, please pay attention to my letter and then do something about it. Mm -hmm. And then I close with the thanks and yours sincerely, my name. And what is the position? If I am a student, I will write just a student. If I am some, I have some designation. If I am a teacher, I might write teacher. If I am a like secretary of a club, I have written here secretary of the student council. In case, in case here the name was given. Hmm. In case you, the name is not given to the students in the question, you are not supposed to write your own name. You are supposed to write X, Y, Z. So, any information where you are not given the details like sender's address or your own name, you are supposed to write XYZ. Hmm. Please do not put in your personal addresses or your own personal name in the letter because it is a formal letter. So, let us move on. This is for your homework or you can say a sample. This is the question, you lived in a crowded area in Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh, unauthorized parking of vehicles in your area is causing a lot of inconvenience. So, problem, problem. is unauthorized parking, parking of mm -hmm. vehicles. So, write a letter to the police commissioner of district complaining against this practice. 
and your name is given and your address is already given in the letter. So, this is what you need to try on the basis of what we have talked about. Do you want me to just revise once more? Uh, yes, we have actually two, or two minutes left. So, if we, we can, can have a this. look. So, yeah. okay. So, what I need to do is just I need to go back to my example. Hmm. I need to put down the information that is given under the given heads. Then I need to decide on the content of how to go about putting that content. Like because the problem is unauthorized vehicles. So, what would be the effect? Then what should be done? And then what is expected out of the authorities? Now, I have one small exercise for you. There are three mistakes, three major mistakes in this letter. Can you try and guess? Right. If we can see this, uh, we can zoom in. Right. Uh, the first name, all right. First of all, you can say there, there is a place name written down, Kavinagar, and then Gaziabad. There is no uh, uh, sequence. The state name is coming then after. And mm -hmm. the date, na date is also not mentioned over there, 201. And I don't understand what exactly it is all about. Suppose if I'm going to read this letter, am, am I the receiver? Uh, so I won't the, be able to get yes, any. Yes, he has pointed it uh, uh, right that the date is not exactly in the correct format because we don't have the ID for uh, Ghaziabad UP. So we have just written XXX, so like can, I have can already pointed. We, write point. like this if we, are not we can write XXX, it's not a problem. But okay. the problem with this is that the date should have been written in the next line with yes. a space which has not been done. Yeah. Right. Okay, can you guess the other problem with the letter? Uh, the police commissioner Gaziva, then after uh, this particular area that uh, that commissioner is, that mm -hmm. is not mentioned over there. Okay. And here sir, subject is uh, given, but uh, uh, subject is not, not too much clear. I think, see if you can read out this. Unauthorized parking, parking yeah. in Kabinagar. Exactly. Uh, so unauthorized parking, but but that region has to be more clear. Actually, mm -hmm. what exactly the problem you are facing uh, as per the unauthorized parking? It has to be clear at least in one or two line, or okay. one and a half line, I would say. Exactly. If what uh, the Minder is pointing out that we can write problems caused by unauthorized Sorry. parking in Kabinagar, if that's the name of the area. And the biggest problem with this letter is, uh, all right. it's written in one paragraph. It has is, to be three. Yes. It has yes, to be yes, yes. You just three. Mentioned it has to be three. Exactly. Four, four, Please don't write your letter in one paragraph. You'll end up losing marks. You will end up confusing the person who is reading your letter. So I think that's the most important thing. If you are going to write a complaint letter, it has to be in three parts. And what were those three parts? Uh, like uh, introduction part. And yes. the middle part where you can put some uh, uh, details of the details, of course, that calls main body. And then after comment of your comment on issues as well. And then after the summing, sum up part, you need to write it down. So these are the basic information about, about uh, complaining letters. Uh, if you miss this program, no need to worry. Link is available on NCERT official YouTube channel. You can grab that link again and uh, you can complain your, uh, your sense how to write the letter about the complaints. Thank you so much, Miriji. Uh, you came to the uh, studio and you know it's such a beautiful session and uh, given uh, some valuable information about uh, uh, complaining letters. So thank you so much. Thank you. Time. Thank you so much all the viewers for watching this program. Don't go anywhere because next program is webinar. We will understand about uh, the journey of an ICT awardee and that could be basically uh, we, we, we um, uh, channelize this program to understand about some uh, uh, various kinds of tools. So don't go anywhere. Webinar is just waiting for you. Just run the corner in a short while.